Go, Mohammed, go. What in the world is going on in Saudi Arabia? A psychopath, killer, with no empathy, with infinite resources. Mohammed bin Salman will be the king for the next 50 years. The media is questioning the White House double standard and hypocrisy when it comes to human rights. But the media also has its own double standards. Before Jamal Khashoggi's case, Mbez was described as a reformer, liberated woman. Reforms inside Saudi Arabia have been revolutionary. Few care that he was accused of war crimes or that he was jailing and torturing opposers. The outrage of the media against him started when he ordered the murder of a journalist. Exploitation of power is corruption, and royals do exploit their position. Now, the relationship between the Saudi Kingdom and the United States has never been based on shared values, but on shared interests, and this is not going to change even if it comes at the cost of abandoning values. Washington and Riyadh cannot step away from a relationship that has served both nations well for 80 years. Saudi Arabia is an important country, the world's biggest exporter of oil, and the birthplace of Islam. The origin of the Saudi state dates back to 1744, political religious allies between between a tribe's leader, Ibn Saud, and the founder of the Wahhabism, radical religious movement that today has major influence on Islamic extremism in the world. In the early 1900s, the Arabian Peninsula was partly under the control of a declining Ottoman Empire. Al Saud controlled the East, while the Hashimis, the Prophet Muhammad's family, controlled the West. Grand Britain considered the leader of the Hashimid, Hussein bin Ali, known as Sheriff of Mecca, their potential ally. In exchange for helping the British Empire against Ottoman in the First World, war, Hussein was promised the creation of a single Arab state that would include today's Iraq, Israel, Jordan, Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, and the rest of the peninsula. Hussein launched the Great Arab Revolt against the Ottoman Empire at Mecca in June 1916, with military backing from France and Britain. No prisoner. Revolt successfully expelled the Ottoman, helping the Allies to win the First World War. But Sharif Hussein realized too late that he had been used. He ignored that there was a secret sykes picot agreement, through which Britain and France had arranged to divide the region after the war. France would take Syria and Lebanon, Britain would rule Iraq, Jordan, and Palestine. The Arabs would get full control of nothing. Moreover, in November 1970, British Foreign Secretary Arthur Belfort promised the establishment in Palestine of a national home for Jewish people. The betrayal was taken a step further. Britain had been supporting Sheriff Hussein's rival in the region, Abdul Aziz bin Saud. General Percy Cox had signed with him the Treaty of Darin. It was the first international recognition of the emerging Saudi state. Sheriff Hussein was opposed to the creation of Israel in Palestine, and he was against the partition of the region. He wanted to be the king of a unified Arab kingdom. Obviously, the Allies were not going to allow such a thing. They had been at war against the Ottoman Empire. They were not going to create an Arab one. Faced with Sharif Hussein's refusal, Britain decides to get rid of him in 1924. They gave Ibn Saud and his Wahhabis fanatics the green light to invade the Hashimid territory. The Hashimid had no chance. They were destroyed by the Saudis. Hussein went into exile, and his sons were put as puppet king over Jordan and Iraq and the mandate of Britain. The only descendant of Sharif Hussein who still reigns today is King Abdullah of Jordan. In 1932, the new nation was proclaimed as Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Six years later, massive oil reserves were discovered by the American company Standard Oil of California. It was the beginning of a strong economic and strategic relationship between the two countries. After the King Abdulaziz passed away, Succession was horizontal between his sons, a system that cannot continue forever. Nearly all Abdulaziz's sons have died. The throne has to jump to the next generation. When Salman became king in 2015, he accelerated the change from horizontal to a classic vertical succession. He removed his own youngest brother from the line of succession and set his son Muhammad on the path to the throne. But in a kingdom where age and experience matter, he could not put his 29 years old son as a second in command right away. He used his nephew Muhammad bin Naif, who had been the interior minister, as throne warmer for his son. He named him as the crown prince while giving his son enormous 
enormous amount of power in less than one year Mbes became defense minister. In reality, since his father inherited the throne, Mbes was de facto the king. Suspicious about Mbes has been around for a long time. The former number two in the Saudi intelligence accused Mohammed bin Salman of planning to kill King Abdullah in 2014 to clear the throne for his father. He fears my information. And he told him, I want to assassinate King Abdullah. I got a poison drink from Russia. It's enough for me just to shake hand with him and he will be done. King Abdullah died in 2015. On June 21, 2017, Mbes decided to get rid of the crown prince bin Naif. He detained him. Later, he accused him of treason. What you are watching is a humiliating show released to the media, in which bin Naif pledged allegiance to the man who was arresting him. Obviously, he was forced to do it. Still today, bin Naif is under arrest. A witch hand has taught it. Mbes arrested a huge number of human rights activists, academics, economists, religious figures. Then he rounded up the kingdom, richest businessmen and most powerful princes, detaining them in Ritz Carlton Hotel, accusing them of corruption with no judicial process. He took over all the pillars of power and business in the kingdom. Jamal Khashoggi, who had fled to the United States, began to criticize Mbes, giving interviews and writing in the important Washington Post. He had to be silenced, but not on American soil. Jamal had a Turkish fiancé. At that moment they were about to get married, he requested documents from the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. He was given an appointment to come back to collect them. The day before, a hitman team flew into Istanbul with diplomatic clearance. The operation was led by Salman's personal bodyguard. Another member of the group stands out, the head of Saudi Forensic Institute. Jamal was killed and dismembered inside the consulate. A body double wore Jamal's clothes to make Turkish police think that Jamal left the consulate alive. Only the shoes appear to be different. They had a very bad original concept. It was carried out poorly, and the cover-up was one of the worst in the history of cover-ups. Bad deal should have never been thought of. Did you order the murder of Jamal Khashoggi? There is no doubt, Saudi Arabia is ruled by a ruthless prince, but the White House cannot push him into a partnership with United States rivals. We are living in a cold of peace, a war between democratic countries led by the United States and authoritarian regimes commanded by China and Russia. After more than a decade of inaction, the United States has been losing its prominent position in the Gulf and the Middle East. Russia is military present in Syria. China has built a military base in Djibouti. Eritrea is a Chinese ally and Iran is more active than ever. But it seems that the Western naivety is over. Putin's invasion of Ukraine has awakened the brain death Europe. And the United States is more aware of the danger of no longer being in control of its destiny. There are clear signs of a US comeback to the international stage. It's out of the question for the White House to lose such an important ally in this strategic part of the world. For its part, Saudi Arabia needs the United States first for economic reasons. Mbes wants to change the country's economic model. He needs American companies and investors. But more importantly, he needs the help of the White House to contain the influence of Iran in the region and to be more involved to prevent Tehran from acquiring the nuclear weapon. China, Russia and Iran are allies. The partnership between the Saudi Kingdom and the United States is crucial to counter Iran's threat. The obsession of Saudi Arabia is Iran. Both countries are bitter enemies. In Islam there are two fractions, Sunnis and Shias. The Muslim in Saudi Arabia are mostly Sunnis, while in Iran they are mostly Shias. Both countries are competing for the leadership of Islam and for the region's domination. The transformation of Iran into a Shia power after the Khomeini revolution in 1979 induced Saudi Arabia to accelerate the propagation of Wahhabism, the radical Sunni movement antagonistic to the Shias. While Iran has been promoting radical Shia groups to gain influence in the Gulf and the Middle East, the day the Iranian regime is present. In Lebanon, Hezbollah has been active for decades. In Syria, the President Bashar al-Assad himself is from a Shia family, and even if 
if his regime is ideologically opposed to the religion ideas, he is an ally for Iran. In Iraq, Saddam was from a Sunni tribe. Since his fall, the state has been dominated by Shia Muslims. In Yemen, the Shia Houthi movement, supported by Iran, assaulted power in 2014. Saudi Arabia led the war in Yemen precisely to prevent the creation of Shia regime. Today, Yemen is a failed state. The Saudi Kingdom near the United States and for Washington, the partnership with MBS is a necessity. In his country, Mohammed bin Salman is very popular, but he has also made a lot of enemies. He has enemies within the Saudi family. Let's remember that King Faisal was assassinated by his nephew in 1975. MBS continues to generate hatred among the religious fanatics. He has started a transition from theocratic to secular regime. He is normalizing the relations with Israel, the enemy of all branches of radical Islamism, and he is leading a frontal assault on the Wahhabis, the co-founders of the Saudi state. Mohammed bin Salman will ascend to the throne with no resistance, and probably the brutal crown prince will be remembered as an angel compared to the future king. Democratic revolution is almost impossible, a coup is highly unlikely. Mohammed bin Salman will be the king for decades if he survives the Game of Thrones. Go, Muhammad, go. For peaceful purposes. No prisoner.